Hi, my name is Joanne Kennedy and I'm a naturopath in Sydney, Australia, and I specialise in methylation and histamine intolerance. In this video, I'm going to share with you my knowledge around methylation and in particular, how issues with methylation can impact mental health. So I'm going to share with you the Methylation Pathway Planner from Seeking Health Educational Institute. And I'm going to talk about each of these different cycles, so the folate pathway, the methionine pathway, the CBS pathway, and the biopsin pathway, and how it impacts mental health. So we're going to start with the folate pathway. So we need to be eating folate-rich foods, and these folate-rich foods, when they're absorbed in the small intestine, will actually be activated and converted into these active forms that we use in the body. And one of them is methylfolate. So methylfolate is down here. So what happens is folate is activated with the MTHFR enzyme to, call, to form methylfolate. Okay, so we do know that if you're consuming folic acid at more than 200 micrograms a day, which is easy to do if you're eating wheat, which is fortified with folic acid in a lot of countries, as well as taking a supplement, what happens is it blocks this DHFR enzyme right up here, which will block the uptake of your natural folate because it has a higher affinity um, for folic acid than it does for folate. Okay, so what can then happen is the methylfolate is not available to do its role in the biopterin pathway. So I'll first talk about the biopterin pathway. So biopterin, tetrahydrobiopterin, is what it's officially called, is BH4. And it is a cofactor for the conversion of amino acids into neurotransmitters. So tyrosine with biopterin will create L-dopa, which goes on to create dopamine. And tryptophan with biopterin will make 5-HTP and then convert into serotonin. Now, once biopterin is used, it's then oxidized to dihydrobiopterin, which is BH2. And for dihydrobiopterin to be regenerated back into tetrahydrobiopterin or BH4, it needs activated folate, okay? So if we don't have enough activated folate, then we're going to have issues with the regeneration of biopterin and neurotransmitter synthesis, okay? So that's how the folate pathway and folates, activated folates, impact directly the biopterin pathway. Now, another thing we need to understand is that methylfolate will, is involved in this pathway here. So this pathway is it does a few things. It is here to make SAM, which is the methyl donor, and it regenerates homocysteine and it, and it then links through to this pathway here, which is the CBS pathway. So how this pathway works, okay, is, is first of all, we need to be consuming methionine. So methionine is an essential amino acid, meaning we need to get it from our diet and animal protein is a very good source of methionine and we need to be absorbing it. So we need good hydrochloric acid and we need good gut function to absorb it. And then it needs to be activated into SAM or s methionine, which is the body's methyl donor. And SAM goes around the body and it donates methyl groups. And methyl groups attach to many, many different enzymes that are called methyl transferase enzymes. And they switch on or also switch off the functioning with it, whatever the body requires. Okay, and one of the enzymes that it works on is this PNMT enzyme, the phenylalanine methyl transferase enzyme. Okay. And it works on the COMPT enzyme, the catechol methyl transferase enzyme. So COMPT's here and COMPT's here. So we can see that the cofactor is SAM. Now, COMPT breaks down dopamine. So if you don't break down dopamine, you can actually feel quite angry and irritated. Okay. If you don't break down noradrenaline and adrenaline, you can feel very, very anxious. And it could also cause insomnia. Okay. So we need to be creating SAM or we need methylation to be working so that we can break down our neurotransmitters. The other thing that methylation is going to do is provide the SAM cofactor for the conversion of serotonin into melatonin. 
So that is really, really important for sleep. So we need melatonin for sleep. Now, the other thing that methylation does is it provides the methyl group for an enzyme called the histamine N-methyltransferase enzyme. Now, people that know me know that I um, know a lot about histamine and I treat it a lot in my clinic. And histamine is actually a neurotransmitter in the brain that can build up when we don't have enough methyl groups for the proper functioning of the histamine and methyltransferase enzyme. And when histamine builds up in the brain, it causes anxiety, it causes depression, and it also causes insomnia. Okay, so insomnia is absolutely one of the main causes of anxiety and depression. Okay, another thing we need to know about methylation and the COMPT enzyme is not only does COMPT break down dopamine and adrenaline, it also breaks down estrogen. So if we don't have enough methyl groups, we can have a reduction in the function of COMPT. And if we can't break down our estrogen, estrogen builds up and estrogen gets into the brain and it increases histamine in the brain. This is why women are getting, part of the reason why women get terrible mood swings before their period or at ovulation when estrogen is soaring, they can feel very anxious, they can feel depressed, they can feel their sleep is is definitely impacted from the increase of estrogen that's increasing histamine in the brain. Okay, so we can see the production of SAM is really important for balancing our neurotransmitters. Now, the other thing that can happen is that This pathway can be upregulated when there is a need for sulfur, okay? So sulfur is really, really important for a process in the body called sulfation. So sulfation is really important for the detoxification of neurotransmitters and hormones. It's really important for um, making mucin in the gut, which is like a protective um, mucus in the gut that traps pathogens breaks down salicylates, it breaks down a lot of medications. So it's a very important part of our biochemistry. And this pathway also makes glutathione, which is our body's major antioxidant. So what can happen is if your requirement for glutathione is really high, which can be caused from chronic inflammation, so chronic gut issues or heavy metal toxicity or an inflammatory condition like endometriosis, what will happen is that homocysteine is a storage molecule for sulfur and it will start to chop up the homocysteine into cysteine. And how it does this is via the CBS enzyme, the CTH enzyme, which is they're both B6 dependent enzymes. So if your requirement for glutathione is high and homocysteine is donating, is converting into cysteine with the use of B6, homocysteine levels will drop and you are using up a lot of your vitamin B6 to get this pathway running, okay? So then what can happen is that you can become deficient in vitamin B6, okay? And a few things, many things can happen with low vitamin B6, including the buildup of oxalates in the body. Oxalates are going to cause a huge inflammatory response. Inflammation causes depression. And at the same time, inflammation increases histamine. As we know, histamine in the brain causes anxiety, depression, and insomnia. We need vitamin B6 to make progesterone. So if you have low progesterone, you're going to have issues with premenstrual mood. You're going to have issues with sleep. B6 is also the cofactor in making important neurotransmitters, including serotonin, dopamine, So we can see here L-DOPA gets converted into dopamine with this enzyme, it's B6-dependent, and 5-HTP gets converted into serotonin, which is B6-dependent. Okay, so lots and lots of links in these pathways and how it can be causing issues with mood. One thing we really, really need to, to know, and there's so much research on this, is that inflammation itself is a major, major cause of depression. Okay, so if homocysteine is low, it really is a sign that there's a lot of inflammation in the body. There's a really, really high need for glutathione and all the inflammation is going to cause inflammation in the brain. 
which is it reduces the plasticity of the brain, which is the health of the brain, and it reduces the neurons firing, which can cause a reduction in uh, neurotransmitter functioning. Okay, so there's lots and lots of things that we need to look at when we're looking at a patient's mental health. And if we're looking at the methylation pathways, they can give us a lot of insight as to the, uh, a lot of the reasons why someone might be feeling anxious, depressed, irritable, why they have massive hormonal mood issues, including premenstrual dysphoric disorder, as well as insomnia.